Kardel Singh, you are chair of the Nobel Prize Committee in Physics, and this year's prize is uh, awarded for an invention that is conferred the greatest benefit to mankind. It's something that Alfred Nobel would be happy about, as you mentioned at the press conference. Can you explain it a bit more? I, I, I really think that Alfred Nobel would be very happy about this prize. It's really an invention and it's really something that will benefit most people. Uh, artificial lighting is everywhere around us and this is a way to make artificial lighting much more efficient than other older light sources. It also gets rid of some of the problems that we have with, with for instance, fluorescent light sources which use mercury. And, and these ones don't have that, and so we can get rid of, of, of the mercury. But there are also other uses uh, which are maybe not so big today, but in the future maybe we will see portable devices that can uh, disinfect water or, or to, to, to sterilize water because UV light can, uh, can, can kill bacteria. And almost everyone has seen an LED light as we have it in our yeah, uh, in, in mobile fact, phones. Uh, mo most people have, have seen this kind of smartphone where you have a, a flashlight uh, which uses this LED technology. In fact, also the screen of the, of the smartphone is using LED technology and many TV sets, etc., are using, or computer screens are using this technology. Yeah, and you have a bright light uh, from the telephone as the one you showed now. The hard thing he here is that the prize is awarded for invention of a blue light emitting right. diode. Yeah. So how does it go yeah. together? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's so that to get white light you really need to combine at least three different colors. So typically you, you mix red and green and blue. Uh, and this is well known, this is actually known since Isaac Newton in 1671. Uh, but uh, it was, so, so the, the red and the green LEDs have been around for a long time, but the, the blue one has really been missing. And so now uh, these laureates have, have made the inventions that made it possible to make efficient blue LEDs. And so now we have that and we can mix it with the red and the green and that provides white light sources. So what did they do that the others failed to make? Yeah, so, so this is very interesting because they, the, so, so what's fascinating is that, that uh, a lot of big companies really tried to do this and they failed. Uh, but these guys persisted and they tried and tried again and eventually they actually succeeded. And you can say there's two, two major things they did. One was just to grow a sufficiently good material. Uh, this, is, this is called gallium nitride and, and that was very hard to grow and to, to get a good material and they managed to do that. And the second part was to dope it uh, in the right way. You, in, in semiconductors like this you, you dope both electrons and holes and it was the hole doping which was very difficult. Uh, but they succeeded in doing that too. So. Uh, and, and it was really an effort that where, where all the three pe uh, people were, uh, contributed to this. Akazaki and Amani worked together uh, uh, in one lab and Nakamura worked in another lab. And they made it in parallel? Yes, they very much made it in parallel and they made different versions of it and they sort of improved each other's results. Uh, and this seems like a giant step in making light actually because until now it was mainly fire that was producing light. Yeah. So, so what's interesting is that this kind of this way of making light is actually getting quite close to the theoretically possible way so that every time you put in one electron uh, you get one particle of light a photon out and, and that's the, the maximum you can get. And, and these, these LED sources are actually going towards that goal. What, so it, what it will be hard to find something that will be better. So we will be left with this now for ever? I think so. <laughs> they will, of course, improve over the years and, and become a little bit better. 
uh, but it, it will you will not get anything that will be you know ten times better. There's not room for that. So they are already now as good as they can be. Oh, n not <laughs> quite, but they're, they're over fifty percent uh, efficiency. Yeah, mm. and, and you can only go to a hundred. So. And the Laureates, they work in Japan in two different yes. places. Yes, so, so all, all of the three are, are born in Japan uh, and they worked in Japan when they did this work. Uh, uh, but Na Nakamura has now moved, moved to California and is in Santa Barbara. How did they react when the telephone call came from Stockholm today? Uh, well, they, they, were, they, they were, of course, quite pleased. Uh, and. Uh, uh, Nakamura, w we woke up in the middle of the night, so it was uh, two o'clock in the morning. So, uh, but because he, he's in the states, yeah. he, he's in California right now. Yes, yeah. and uh, Akasaki, he was in. For him, it was evening, so he, he was of course awake. But uh, Amano, he's on a, an airplane from from Japan to France right now, so we didn't reach him. So. Uh, hopefully there will be people meeting him at the airport and giving him the good news. Thank you for dancing, for being here. Thank you. Thank you.